state the risks and then make the recommendation. I give risk versus benefit and the parents make the decision and I don't force anybody to vaccinate. Good morning, Lori and Cole Bryan, number 11912, on behalf of those present. Also with me is co counsel Eric Perrin. Bar number? 9554, Judge. What's your last name? Cole, C O L E. And uh, counsel for the Good morning, Your Honor. Patricia Moore, Bar number 8406, appearing on behalf of the defendants. Are you present? Please stand each other. Yeah, you can sit down. So I just want to know. I told her she could go because okay. everyone's here. Okay. So I just want to be sure about that. Is everyone ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So just for you, I think there's a moving party here. Um, I think there are two motions on file. Different things going on, so I'm not quite sure who the moving party is. So, from counsel's perspective, who wants to go first? I don't really care. I, I think um, we initially filed our motion for reconsideration, okay. so we would like to go first. You want to go first? Okay. So, do you guys want to do opening statements, or do you just want to get right into it? Uh, briefly, Your Honor, yes, I would. Sure. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for hearing this case. It's a very serious matter concerning a child relocating to the state of Texas, and whether the court grants permission to do that. Um, these are, I know, issues of serious public and personal concern. And um, I thank the court for taking the time to hear all the evidence today and making this very serious decision. Um, the evidence today is going to show that there are several witnesses that are going to testify that it is not, not only in the child's best interest to relocate, but also that uh, Mr. has his burden of showing there's an actual advantage to this child by relocating. In fact, he will not even be able to show that it's in his advantage to relocate. Um, we are going to have Dr. Barlow, who's a pediatrician, testify briefly regarding some uh, misrepresentations that were made by Mr. during the co-parenting relationship. Um, we are going to have an officer testify that Mr. was intoxicated at the child exchange. We are going to have my client testify and Mr. testify primarily and most concerning about the way they've communicated, which is all in writing, and it is somewhat extensive. And I think that that in itself will show the court what the court really needs to know about how these parties co-parent and the serious issues that Ms. has created between um, the co-parenting relationship, which is directly not only affecting this child's welfare and future mental health, but also the withholding of time that my client has continually lost due to Ms. antics, and they are all spelled out in the co-parenting messages that I will go through today to show your honor that it is absolutely not in the child's best interest to relocate because Mr. will not allow frequent associations and a continuing relationship between this child and my client. And it is not going to be any advantage. There is not a single, the evidence will show there's not a single advantage to this child moving to Texas. There's no community there, there's no support. Her mother is not there, and Mr. is not even receiving a benefit um, by living there, as the court will see from the evidence, not only that he's admitted to in his filings, but also for, from his testimony. And based on the evidence that you hear today, Your Honor, we would ask that the court deny the request to relocate and maintain the child's residency here in the state of Nevada. Thank you. Thank you. And then, Ms. Martin, do you want to make a video? I do, but I'd like to invoke the exclusionary rule. There's somebody in the audience. I don't know who they are. Well, as you know, she's not a witness. These cases are now presumptively open cases. It's right. a custody case. So I don't know that I have the latitude. I want to ensure that she's not a witness. Yeah, as long as she's, or and, is she a witness? She's not. She's not a witness, so. Okay. With that being said, Your Honor, um, in counsel's opening statement, um, it made a lot of inaccurate represent, re representations to the court. With that being said, we are going to look extensively at the communications and the 
co-parenting app, um, and it's it it's a fallacy to believe. I could say, you know what, Your Honor, you're a giraffe. That doesn't make you a giraffe. So simply because you say you're not co-parenting with me in an application does not make that uh, representation accurate. And you're going to see quite a bit of that where my client has made the effort uh, to communicate with her to co-parent. He would love nothing more, but it's consistent to the point I would request a psychological exam um, of the plaintiff. But with that being said, he actually, um, since we've been in court very recently, uh, immediate, well, the reason was that he obtained employment where he couldn't find it in Nevada for a variety of reasons, which we've laid out in the pleadings, but his brief time there, he's secured even better employment. He's to begin August the 12th with uh, better um, financial opportunity and full benefits. It's sad that mom can't find it, especially with her employment, uh, can't find it within herself to co-parent for the benefit of this child. But you're going to hear testimony as to how my client's uh, request to move is in, was made in good faith. Since he's been there, uh, he's going to testify that the, the child is flourishing, albeit uh, the exchanges when mom takes it upon herself. To it, It's just, it's, it's, it's shocking to the senses that somebody, like I mean, perhaps she flourishes on the drama. I, I don't know, but it's not to the benefit of this child, and she can't see past that. And so I know it's not before the court, but um, we would likely be requesting a psychological examination. You're, you're going to hear about um, how her motives in opposing this motion are dishonorable. You have somebody that won't even pay her child support. It's my understanding she pays, she owes over $15,000 in back child support arrears. And why would you, why would you, th these parents share this child, why would you oppose dad's opportunity to provide a better lifestyle for your child? And we were before this court not too long ago when he said, whatever visitation she wants, I'll make it happen. I recognize she needs her mother in her life, and I'm not going to go through all the Schwartz factors, but it's, it doesn't matter whether he moved to the moon or returns to Vegas, which he can't, based upon his inability to find uh, employment here in, in his given profession, but mom's drama won't stop. I don't, I don't know what it's going to take. Uh, two prior judges, I know you're, you're on the case now, but two prior judges had to make a ruling that the, it's unfortunate because dad wanted to give additional time, but two prior judges, I think it was Judge Bailey, said you have to follow the orders specifically, and that's to keep mom in check. And even with that, I don't know why she feels that she can do whatever she wants, but you're going to hear that today. At every turn, it's trying to frustrate uh, dad's co-parenting. Every single turn. And you know what, Your Honor? I think it's notable, very notable. You, you march into court, you owe thousands and thousands of dollars in child support, yet you want to deny dad the ability to care for your child. This is her child, too. They share this child together. And so I would submit to the court that he's, he is going to prove the factors under Shores that it's in his child's best interest. And as I said, she's flourishing in Texas. And I'm, I'm not going to belabor the court because it will come out in testimony. OK, thank you. And then, counsel, we're going to come and call first witness then. Um, I would like to call Dr. Barlow. Thank you very much. Whenever you're ready. Thank you. 
Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Douglas Barlow, um, pediatrician, uh, B A R L O W. How are you familiar with the parties in this case, if you are familiar? Um, their daughter uh, is uh, a client at Anthem Mills Pediatrics. Is that? And, the and sorry, Dr. Barlow, just be sure, just because we do um, have some video taping going on here, just don't use the child's name. You can use her initial, or I can just call her the child. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Why are we videotaping? Um, pursuant to court order and the custody proceedings are not presumptively open. But you need my permission. I do not need your permission. Um, it is what it is. It's a court order. Okay. And I, I have no problems with that. Okay. Thank you. Just for the record, I will not be asking you any HIPAA protected questions. Okay. As far as I am aware. Okay. Um, you can probably correct me better on that if that occurs. Um, okay. Dr. Barlow, you mentioned Anthem Hills Pediatrics. Are you affiliated with that office? Yes, I am. I'm How are you affiliated? I'm a pediatrician practicing in that, in that practice. Okay, and that's the practice that the child in this case has attended? Yes. Um, do you recall any conversations with either of these two parents about vaccination? Many. Do you recall whether or not you made a recommendation whether this child should or should not be vaccinated? I make recommendations on vaccines all the time with every patient, and I recommend, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, that every child be vaccinated. However, I recommend that parents make the decision based on the risks versus the benefits of the vaccines that need to be given that day. Okay. To ask this another way, was there ever a time that you recall recommending the child in this case not be vaccinated? I don't recall which parent wanted to vaccinate and which one did not. No, I don't recall. Okay, so my question is, do you recall specifically yourself making a recommendation whether or not the child in this case should be vaccinated? Objection asked and answered. I believe it has been asked and answered. Do you want to ask a different question to that right information you're seeking? Um, Your Honor, I believe he may have misunderstood the question because he didn't directly answer my question. Okay, he said so, the parents, not him. Sure. So it's overruled. Just one more time, though, okay? And then maybe that's Thank you. Not the parents, not what the parents said. Do you recall yourself making a recommendation on whether this child should be vaccinated? I'm going to object, Your Honor. Vague. There are plethora. I'm not a doctor, but there are plethora of vaccines. I so mean, that's what we're rolled. You can answer it if you can remember. Um, every time a child is vaccinated in our office, I give the risks versus the benefits of, uh, of a child being vaccinated, including family history of autoimmune <laughs> diseases, autism, uh, reactions, MTHFR conditions in mother. Uh, quite frequently, um, there are alternative vaccine schedules that, that are arranged with the parents to make them more comfortable with vaccines. Uh, I do recommend that every patient follow the American Academy of Pediatrics, but there are a lot of parents that are uncomfortable with the schedule, or there are risks in the family that are involved that make a parent decide to either delay vaccines completely or create an alternative schedule. Okay, so, so would you have recommended a child in your office not be vaccinated? Just generally not be vaccinated. Uh, objection. Uh, vague. Do you recall saying this child so, should not so be vaccinated? Counsel, counsel, that objection, it's sustained. That's okay. way overbroad and it calls for speculation, incomplete hypothetical, a whole bunch of things. I understand. So. Do you recall saying that this child? In this case, I don't even remember which parent wanted to vaccinate or which one did. I, I, and I don't necessarily need to know that. I just need to know whether you remember saying that she should not be vaccinated. I don't. I don't yes. believe I ever stated anything like like that. No. Okay. Do you recall in, between these parties you prohibiting mom from being at the doctor's office? Absolutely you... not. I have nothing to do with that. It has to do with our administration and our office, and those records can all be subpoenaed from our office at any time. Okay. Do you recall yourself recommending that mom not be in the appointment? That is absolutely false. I never recommended anything like that. Okay. Do you personally remember mom har harassing your office in any way? No, I do not. All I know is what I was told from the front office, and all that's basically hearsay anyway. I, I don't know. I don't know anything that happened between the mom, the dad, and our front office. All I asked was, I believe, when the child was vaccinated, I made sure that our, our front office staff, that, they, that they, I had permission to vaccinate this child based on custody and or wishes of either parent. 
I understand. So typically you would leave that up to the parents. You wouldn't make an opinion on whether the child should be vaccinated. You would state the risks and then make the recommendation. I give risk versus benefit and the parents make the decision and I don't force anybody to vaccinate. Okay. Do you recall mom ever saying that she was going to quote, chew dad's head off if he gave, if you gave the child her shot? No, I was, she never spoke to me about that at all directly. Okay. Did you, okay. That was relayed to me from a front office staff member. Okay, and that was relayed to you coming from, well, you can't. I don't remember. I don't remember who said it, but the mom said something about she didn't. She would, she would chew somebody's head off. Something to that effect that she didn't want the child vaccinated. I, I, that's all I heard, and I, I just made sure that I, I don't recall the incident or whether the child was even vaccinated that day or not. Do you even know if that information came from mom or dad? I have no idea what it was. It was hearsay from the front office staff. Okay. Pass the witness. Ms. Boyd, do you have any questions? Do you, do you recall making a um, recommendation given that autism runs in plaintiff's family? Objection. Um, Objection, ask and answer. I didn't actually, I haven't heard the question yet. Okay. What's the question? I'll, I'll, I'll reword it. Do you recall your office, the Anthem Hills office, um, any discussions within the office that might be oh, back? Council, please don't use my name. Okay, bad habit, minor child. Uh, do you recall the discussions within your office that the minor child uh, may be <coughs> discharged as a patient because of the uh, behavior of the plaintiff? No, I don't. I have no knowledge of that. Um, but you did hear something to the effect that the plaintiff was going to, and, and I quoted you, chew someone's head off. <coughs> Objection. <coughs> Ask and answered and calls for your say. Sustained. Do you re recall in this particular case, and if you don't, I know you see a great deal of patients, but do you recall in this specific case that making a recommendation that the vaccine schedule for the minor child should be uh, delayed based upon the family history? I believe I had a discussion with the, fa the father at this point that um, with a family history of autism, you can consider delaying vaccines or doing an alternative schedule. I give that advice to every parent that comes in with any kind of a risk factor. That's right. Okay. All right. I have no further questions. Did you have any redirect? Just Clarifying your last comment, you give the pros and the cons, but you don't tell the parents what to do. Is that what I understand that your correct. testimony? Okay. That's correct. I don't make that decision. Parents make that decision. That's what. That's what. Uh, that's why it's called informed consent. I understand. I can't. For, and, and to sum it all up, I can't force a patient to be vaccinated because inherently, unfortunately, there are some risks to vaccines. They are not riskless. Therefore, my job is to give parents all the information to which they can make an informed decision. Do you remember, generally speaking, within the last two years, who typically would take the child to the appointments? If you remember, mom, dad, or both? Um, I, I've met, I've met dad both. I don't recall how many times each was there. Okay. Uh, nothing further. Okay, thank you, Susan. I, I have one. So look, in this courtroom, I'm not going to do direct, cross, redirect, recross, or not. We're doing direct, cross, and redirect, period. That's what we do. Okay. So, sir, you can step down. Thank you so much for your time today. You're very welcome. Who did you want to call next? Um, I can just call Jason De La Gary, Officer De La Gary. Right here, we'll get you 
something further than someone you've asked in this action. Should the truth be that you went through something that? Yes, it is. Council, are you ready? Good morning. Thank you for being here. Can you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? My name is Jason J A S O N A L A G R I D E space L A space G A R R I G U E. Oops, the last part. <laughs> Sorry, it's a lot of words. That's right. I G U E. <laughs> Okay, I think it's I just got Dale. Right. It's a uh, so Dale and then G A R R I G U E. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> okay, um, officer, tell me what you do for employment. Um, currently, I'm a police officer with LVMPD. I've been with the department for 24 years. Um, Currently, I'm assigned to the uh, Harry Reid International Airport at Terminal 3, one of the uh, substations there. Okay. And are you trained, or what kind of uh, <coughs> kind of work have you done in your career as a police officer? Oh, geez. Um, <coughs> uh, initially started out in patrol, um, worked in a problem solving unit, which is not quite the detective level. Um, field training officer, uh, worked by narcotics, uh, community oriented police and more patrol and at the airport. Okay. Currently. In your experience and training, are you trained to detect when a person is intoxicated? Yes. How are you trained in that field, in that uh, <clears throat> manner? Well, I mean, if we're going back to, I could say, Going back to when I was trained for DUIs, for example, mm -hmm. um, recognizing signs, symptoms, eye movement, um, which is a nystagmus, odors, <coughs> and then there's all, all kinds of things. Do you have training and experience detecting intoxication even without field sobriety testing? Yes. How are you um, trained in that area? Well, when we took a uh, it's the uh, nystagmus, it's a class where there's actually intoxicated people that are there. It's a control, so it's a controlled setting where people are essentially given, given drinks, certain levels, and as part of our training, we're dealing with the, these live people as far as impairment levels, signs, things to look for, things like that. So it's, yes, people are, essentially they're there to be from the point of small intoxication to extremely intoxication but in a controlled environment okay how many years did you uh work in patrol where you arrested people for intoxication i, I would object to the form of the question Overall. Um, God, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's been a long career, I could say, over probably, probably about 15 years, but that's, uh, it's been broken up in sections. Do you, are either of the parties in this case familiar to you? Um, this gentleman is right here. Okay, and how are these he familiar to you? So, in, uh, April 26th, I had a call for a, uh, child custody exchange in Terminal 3, in the uh, Terminal 3 baggage area. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman, he was one of the parties that was involved. Okay, and do you recall why you were called? Um, to, to facilitate the peaceful exchange. Is that, that was the initial details of what I was called. Okay, what happened when you got there? I contacted um, the mother first, and she was with the daughter. So let's not say the child's name because this is being filmed by the... Um, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, the, with her daughter, and her initial belief was, she stated she believed he, uh, he was intoxicated, um, that she smelled alcohol coming from his breath. Um, she showed me on her uh, cell phone that there was an active uh, family court case, and it was a PDF of a uh, court order. 
Okay. And did you have contact with the defendant to corroborate whether mom was accurate in her concerns? Um, yeah, I con contacted her first, and then, you know, my job is to contact both parties, so I contacted him. On the phone or in person? In person. He okay. was there in person. When you had contact with the plaintiff, or the defendant, excuse me, was it your opinion that he was intoxicated? Yes. Okay, and how, why do you believe that he was intoxicated? So, talking to him, um, I could I could smell the alcohol. It's pretty uh, pretty strong odor. Um, his gait, basically his stance when he was standing up, it was really wobbly to the point to where it's almost better for him to sit down while speaking to him. Did he sit down for the conversation? You remember? I, one point he was, but I can't tell you in, in what order. Do you recall whether he was receiving the child that day or whether he was transferring the child to mom that day? He was receiving the child that day. Do you feel, based on what you observed, that mom was accurate in her concerns about his intoxication? As far as mom saying she believed he was intoxicated, yes. What happened, well, did the child exchange ultimately end up happening? No, mom chose not to. Okay. And was that a decision that your the officers left up to the parents? Yeah, it, it has to be. We're, we're just there because it's a civil court order. We're, just there to facilitate a safe exchange, make sure there's no argument, things like that. Okay. Aside from the wobbly gait and the strong smell and odor of alcohol, was there anything in the defendant's speech that caused you to believe he was intoxicated? That I can't remember, but I did. I asked him if he was drinking, and he said he had one drink, close to his quote. Okay, and based on your training and experience, do you believe that he only had one drink? No. Do you have any opinion on how many drinks he may have had? No, okay. Fair enough. I'm going to pass the witness. Any questions, Ms. Moore? Oh, yes. Um, is your certification to perform standardized field sobriety tests current? Yes. Oh, okay. And uh, when did you obtain, uh, update that certification? I don't have to. When we take that initial certification class, it's a class we take, we don't have to continuously update it. Um, the exact class, I, it's, it's been a while. Okay. Uh, what would you define as a while? Oh, Years, months? Years. Years, okay. All right, and did you perform any standardized field sobriety tests on uh, Mr. No. No? No. Okay, so there wasn't any walk and turn? No, it's a, it wasn't. A, no one leg stand? It, it wasn't a DUI investigation. Oh, okay. So and there was no HGN or vertical? No. Nope. Oh, okay. No stimulus used? Nope. Okay. How uh, far in proximity were you when speaking to my client? Um, I mean, in, a, in front of them. I mean, a, in a close distance as if you're having a conversation with anybody else. How, how far would that be? Um, standing where your table is talking to him. Okay, all right. And you're at the airport, right? Yes. Okay. And are, were there a lot of people at the airport? A lot uh, of people at the airport? That day, and where I was, the baggage claim area, I didn't see that crowd. And I can't specifically tell you how many people were there. Okay, fair enough. Were there people around, though? In our area, no. Um, and my client wasn't driving, was he? That I didn't see. He was, uh, he actually, he flew there from Texas. Okay. All right. And, all right. So you didn't perform, I just want to be clear for the record, you didn't perform any um, standardized test for objection asked him. Now, the counsel referred to this alleged odor of alcohol uh, as strong. Would you say it was strong or just an odor of alcohol? It was strong. If, if I'm talking to a person at a you know, regular conversation distance and it's yes. obvious enough for me to smell it, it's considered strong odor. Yeah. Okay. 
Did my client tell you that um, he had not uh, slept for a while based upon the travel? Uh, that I don't remember. Okay. You don't recall that? No. Okay. And you asked my client if he did have consumed alcohol, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Did you ask him when he had consumed the alcohol? No. I'm sorry. You no, I, no, I assumed it was recent. You made an assumption? Yeah, because he was there at the airport. And plus, because I could smell such a strong odor, it was strong enough to where I could tell it was recent. If he had flu there, he was at the airport. So as far as where the alcohol consumption occurred, I couldn't tell you. Okay. So you couldn't, okay, you couldn't tell when he consumed it, is that correct? No. Okay, and you didn't know where he even consumed it, correct? No. Okay, and do you recall my client telling you that he had had a drink the night prior? No, I don't recall. You don't recall that? No. In your experience as an officer and the, did you take your certification of luck here, by the way? I'm sorry? Luck here? I, it's, it's been years, okay. so okay. I, I can't tell you. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, in your experience, um, have you ever encountered individuals that had had consumed alcohol uh, like the evening prior and still tested? Um, and I won't get into the mechanics of it um, with the blood and the breath tests and all that. Um, but do you have you ever encountered individuals that had consumed alcohol perhaps the evening prior and, and they still you can still smell it emanating from them? It's a yes or no. I'm going to object to the question. It's Black's Foundation question. Already been, it's already testified it was recent the, based on the odor. I'm sorry. Okay, one more time. I'm not going to get into the mechanics of the, all the science of the elimination of alcohol from your system and whether it's blood or breath tests or any of that. Just in your experience uh, as an officer, have you ever encountered individuals that they had consumed alcohol like uh, the evening prior, yet they still emanate uh, an odor? It's, it's been 24 years. I mean, I can't give you a specific, oh yeah, I remember that time. Is it possible? Yes. Oh, okay. But I don't remember any specific time. But that is possible. Yes. Okay. Did you ever ask my client whether alcohol had uh, spilled on my client? No. Okay. That's a no? No. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor? Anything else? Well, wait. I, I do have one question. I'm sorry. Um, you said my client looked like he, um, he um, needed to sit down. Is that, do I have that testimony correct? Yes. Okay, could that have been um, based on the fact that he was traveling and tired? I, it, it's possible. I mean, oh. like, that, okay. that wasn't my my assumption at that point. I mean, it was it was because the way he appeared to me. Okay, you know. but that was your assumption, right? Yes. You yes. Didn't like, because from okay, you didn't conduct a breathalyzer test. No, I. You didn't have a PBT no. on you. No, I don't. That's yeah. not okay. normally a function for. Okay. But you have used PBTs before? No, I'm not a uh, traffic officer, and they're assigned. And plus, with I... PBTs, they're not admissible on the list. Right, I understand that. But So you've never used a PBT? No. No, okay. Um, so this is based on assumptions, correct? Your assumptions? Uh, training and experience is a, better, okay. is a better way to say it. Okay, but because... just without the conducting any of these tests, the vertical, um, the HGN, the one leg stand, the walk and turn, you didn't conduct any of those tests, so this is just your assumption based on what you believe the smell is. Is that so, right? Yes or no? No, it's, it, I mean, that's that's a question that's can require a lot of explanation, not just a yes or no. Right. So, no, because it wasn't a DUI, so I'm not going to, I mean, right. that's not a, uh, right. a, something a patrol officer would do anyways. So, as far as, again, better way to explain it, training and experience, I'm 24 years of various capacities of dealing with people of all intoxication levels, whether or not it's alcohol, drugs, narcotics. I have enough knowledge and experience in my career to be able to tell if somebody's intoxicated or not. Okay. Um, and would you agree with me that 
uh, individuals in, in completing your training for to be certified um, to conduct a field sobriety test, a standardized field sobriety test. Um, would you agree with me that during that training, uh, did you learn that it's possible for one individual uh, to have one drink of alcohol, another individual to have the same amount of alcohol, but that they react differently? <laughs> I, the, this was God, almost 15 years, 16 years oh, ago, so okay. it's... been a while. Yeah, I mean, so specifically, I'm sorry, what are you asking? What, during that training, did you learn, since you're, you're in your experience, have you learned that one individual, for example, the judge could have one drink, she's a petite, petite uh, woman, she could have one glass of, or uh, one drink, right? Another individual, say, no, it, I, my, I think I think I understand now. Right, so, my client. So, so alcohol, a one amount can affect two individuals yeah, there's, differently. I mean, correct. There's a number of variables, in, right, including like what you explained. Okay, certainly. So you can have one drink and just be, oh, right. I'm, I'm tired and here maybe a little. Um, that coupled with fat lack of sleep, uh, would that affect somebody as well? It could. Okay, and um, what's your indulgence. Oh, final question. Uh, was my client like falling down drunk to the point where he's slobbering on himself? I mean, no. Like, no. Okay. So you didn't see any problem during your during speaking with my client that he wasn't fit to carry on about his business. I mean, that's that's my not my for. So if it's obvious, like you just explained, falling down and slobbering and whatnot. Okay, then. Okay, I have a duty to say what's as far as the child neglect and endangerment. What's best if someone to take care of the child? Okay, um, that that wasn't the case, no. right? Okay, it wasn't like riding the luggage carousel or anything, no. right? Okay, all right, no further questions. Anything else? Briefly, yes, thank you. Um, the question from defendant's counsel was, did you know if the defendant had spilled alcohol on himself? Do you recall the defendant ever telling you he just spilled alcohol on himself? No. Did he say that he had spilled alcohol at all no. to you? And in your experience and training, and I know the training was, was a longer time ago, but your experience has been since then, right? And your officer experience? Yeah, I mean, it's in, in many capacities, yes. Okay. Was the odor and the signs of intoxication appear to be from recent use? Yes. Did you uh, observe a bag of pills on the defendant that day? Injection no. exceeds the scope. It doesn't exceed the scope. That's the same. Nothing further, thank you. They may have asked you this, officer, but what time of day was it? It was uh, early afternoon. It was uh, a little after uh, 4 o'clock. Okay. For uh, the uh, airport control, it's 4 o'clock. All right, thank you so much for your time today. You're free to go. Thank you, officer. Okay. Thank you for being here. Please join the I'm going to call my client. Okay. Sorry. Just sorry. You want to say that? Like, do you want to have you mind? I didn't have a wig. No, that's fine. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay. Can you say your name for the record? My name is. Okay, you are the plaintiff in this case? Yes. All right, please turn to Exhibit 1. Is there any objection to the admission of Exhibit 1? It's the party's at close messages? No. Okay. So it's admitted? Okay. Generally speaking, after the trial that you and the defendant had in 2021, was there conflict within your co-parenting relationship? Yes. Okay. And was there a time between that date and now that that changed? Yes. When, when did that change? Um, I can testify that things changed uh, when needed something from me or he wanted me to make accommodations for him um, that's when it seems like then we will co-parent um, a little bit better okay was there a significant change at some point in time um, recently I would just say as of recent um, before the relocation um, when dad was asking for the relocation we were co-parenting well okay and then did that change again after a certain point after dad's relocation or temporary relocation was granted, then the conflict, uh, he, he was no longer being nice to me and the conflict uh, continued. Okay, was it a very stark difference between the communication style and Rejection the- Rejection meeting? How would you characterize it? Can, can you wait until I, so that's the state. How would you characterize the level of difference between the communication style? Um, so for example, for the love of, so it will be one minute he uh, hates me, and the next minute on the app he's telling me how he loves me, how he wants us to have a family again, um, and this was just before the relocation. Okay. So that's how extreme, you know, it can go from, you know, he's not accommodating me when I ask for a time to see the child, um, to, you know, he's saying that he's going to come visit Treasure Island on the Okay, so let's get into it. We're going to go through these records and there's quite a few, so I'm going to try to keep up the pace. So turning to the exhibit book, um, starting in Bates 20, Bates 20. Tell me what date these messages begin. What page? 20. Um, 9-21-2020. Okay. When was the last the trial where the permanent custodial order was entered? What month and year was that? Um, I believe it was August I said page 20, but I'm actually starting on page um, 34. I think. It's really hard to read these big stamps. Yes, yes. <laughs> you can barely read them. All right, so are you, let me know when you get to that page, please. Okay, I'm on page 34, and it's starting at January 5th, 2021, is that correct? No, um, no. It's, I know, it's really confusing. So there's these orange letters. I don't know if they're orange on your copy, but they're orange on mine. And the actual page of the app post is page 34 of 858. Maybe that's a better way to refer to them. So I can't read your face stamps. I can't either. Um, so, 
So let's just go off of pages. <laughs> and of the, the rules require that things be bait stamped, and essentially I can't read your bait stamp, so um, you haven't really complied with the rule. Um, well, Judge, I'm Associated Counsel in my office. I uh, didn't do the specific bait stamp, but I'm assuming that Mr. Friend's office frequently prints them in these color, Mr. Friend. Um, however, I think we can identify this exhibit by the page numbers more easily, and they're all numbered. Um, it's actually, counsel, mm -hmm. it's actually difficult because the baits are over, over the page the numbers. Yeah. I understand, but so I, am on, I can read page 34 of 858 on my page. This is what I hate. They're all chronological order. And they're all in chronological order. Do you have a clean copy? Maybe that would be. And my mine starts on September 12th of 2021. And I'm going to be going in order of this entire record. So, Council, what I'm telling you is I cannot read your exhibit because I'm not going to sit here and flip through to page 38. Right. I mean, I can't read your base down. Right. I can't read it, and it's covering the page number. I understand. So, well, essentially, this exhibit is not going to be very valuable if mm -hmm. I'm not able to follow what it is you're talking about. So, Your Honor, in order to assist the court and the parties in being able to understand this exhibit, what I am doing it's not is being able to understand the exhibit. It's that we, follow along. we can't find the page. So, I'm going to start. Everything is in chronological order, and I'm going to start at the beginning of September 12th, 2021 on the page and go straight through page by page. You're going to go through every single one of these pages? I'm going to flip through some to point out things and I will say two pages in and we can keep going in order of the exhibit. There are a lot of very important things between these parties. How many pages of exhibits are there? This is my main exhibit for trial. How many pages are there? I would say... You're going to go through 856 pages one by one? I'm not going to go through every single page and every single word, but I am going to go through them in order to point out things that were happening between these parties because it's, my, in my view is, it would be almost detrimental to the court to not know how these parties, that's the only way well, they communicate. And counsel, if this is your main exhibit, you one would think that you would have been sure that the court could actually read the base downs. Judge, I'm going to have to, re I, I rely on co-counsel to bait stamp my pages because that was what their office has been on this case for two and a half years. I came on the case just to assist, and so I did I did counsel, my preparation with counsel, able to you review team, them. Right? I, I mean, it's probably not appropriate to be pointing fingers I, at another attorney, but you're a team, right? Yes, I am. Yes, so we are. I'm saying you need to provide the court with a document with readable bait, stamp, bait stamps. That's what I'm saying as well as opposing counsel. This does not comply. I understand. This so is what, what I have. We, so what we're going to do is we're going to recess, and you guys are going to have the opportunity to see if you can fix this and okay. bring it back. And I apologize. I'm not, I just, I'm at the mercy of the document. I went through the document myself, and I was able to read the base set numbers by staring at them more carefully. But I understand. I understand that it's hard to read, and I, Completely understand. The okay, so we're going to be in recess, and we'll we'll just convene after, I guess after lunch. We'll, how long do you think, Mr. Fan, is going to be? Judge, we can. I mean, this. the office can just have either rebate stamped or, I mean, it. It just goes, and I, I apologize. This is you know, me on this one line. Um, it didn't appear that way on the electronic file, so we'll have that sent over shortly, Judge. I'm going to call my office right now. I don't think it'll take very long at all. Um, maybe I'll have even just let the bait stand. Just a few minutes, well, you're going to have to have copies for everybody. That's fine. I, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hundreds of pages. Okay. And, Your Honor, I can bait stamp a document in about three seconds once I get it, so I could probably maybe put it through my program also and have it printed. Yeah, that's fine. We'll have an email number in a second. So we'll work together on this. Okay. okay. So, do you want to break for lunch now? And, sure. And just maybe do like a... And I'm just mindful of the fact that you have a hearing you have to do at 1.30, right? Yep. So, Mr. Friend, I don't know how far away your office is, so how Quick. long? 10 minutes. So how long do you think, realistically? I don't want to make you guys rush too much and not be able to fix it. I could do it within an hour, Judge. Do you think an hour would be okay? Sure. Sure. So why don't we start back up at 12.30, and then we'll go to 1.30, take that quick break for you, okay? okay. And, and Fair I, enough. I appreciate that. I, I couldn't get coverage. And no, it's, that's okay. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Where is school counsel? Said he would be back. 
come according to them, he's on his way, but um, I'm going to start with using plaintiff's exhibits because they do have part of the exhibits I need, and they have the ones I need to start, so I'm going to start with their exhibit J. So your plaintiff, so I mean defendant's defended. exhibits, have this, some of the same messages that I need, so I'm going to start with their exhibit well, J. Well, counsel, the problem is we admitted your exhibit. We have not admitted defendant's exhibit. Okay. So are you seeking to admit something different now than what was admitted? They are the same messages, but yes, I am asking to admit Exhibit J. Is sure. there any objection? No. And you? As soon as they come, some of the end of the months are in the exhibit they're standing for me. So It's just concerning that, you know, everyone's time is precious, and <laughs> we all have huge dockets, and Co counsel said that we'd be back at 1230. It's now 1250. And someone's just now walking in with some more, I assume, maybe the exhibit that you need. So, are you wishing to use your exhibit rather than the other exhibit? I um, assume that I exhibit is complete. Judge, the ones I was going to be using were identical to start with, but now that she's here, I will start with my exhibit one. Okay, so we all need to go off the record. Okay. This is again D19 60047 60047 6C and um on the stand, right? Who's gonna come back up? Just remind you you're under oath, okay? Okay. So you can see. Whenever you're ready. Thank you. Um, may I call you? Yes. Um, go ahead and turn to exhibit one, and I'm going to direct you to bait stamp number 96. Okay. I am now at 96. Okay, do you recall a trip you planned to go on in the end of 21? 20 yeah. of 21. What trip was it? Um, it was a cruise um, to go out of uh, Florida. Where was the cruise going to? I was going to the Bahamas. Who was going on the cruise? Me and my aunt. Was the, the cruise um, prepaid? Yes. Who prepaid the cruise? My aunt. Did you request permission to take your child with you? From dad, yes. And what was dad's response? No. Okay. Um, was any, what were the dates of the, the cruise trip? Um, can I look to reflect, to refresh my memory? I don't know off the top of my head. Yes, I'm on page 96. And you talk about it at the top of that page if you would like to refresh your recollection. It's the bait stamp number. Oh, it is also the regular number. They're all 96 in the right hand corner. Yeah. Okay, so about the third comment you make down, you talk about when you're, that you're refreshing your recollection. For the dates that I was going, correct? Yes. Well, I, I was leaving. Go ahead. Okay. I was, my uh, plane flew out on the 11th of December. Was or it? the 10th of December. Okay, and what, when was the cruise? It was on the 11th. All right, and where was the plane going to, from and to? It was leaving from Las Vegas uh, to Florida. All right. Did you ask for any time? Well, first of all, was any of that time from December 11th through the 19th your regular custodial time? Yes. What amount of time, if you remember, was your custodial time? Um, it was from that Friday until that Sunday. What dates were you referring to? Um, so 12 10 2021 through the 12th. Okay, and what about the next weekend? Would you have had any time? Yes. Okay, and what were those dates going to be? Um, well, just the following weekend, right after the weekend of the 10th? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, did you, um, okay, so did you have your child on the 10th of December before you were supposed to be on the flight? Yes. All right, did you discuss a times to take her and return her that day with your co-parent yes okay and what happened that evening when you were going to return her 
so that evening, um, I had before I was going to uh, board the plane or go on my cruise because me and dad had talked about it previously. Um, when it came time to drop her off, when dad told me that he was at the uh, police station, um, I proceeded to go there. When I got to the police station, dad was not there. Okay, stop there. Okay. Did you make a mistake when you estimated the time to return that day? I yes. would object not only to the child's thing, oh, it's being mentioned by the witness and counsel. It's not really an objection. Uh, hopefully somebody will catch me if I do that also, but to the question being leading. The question is leading, so that's sustained. So if you want to ask it, re ask it. Okay. And hopefully they're going to bleep out when that happens. I prefer, and I apologize. I will no, no, try say harder. <laughs> say yes, you will. We always do that. Okay. okay. Always. Hopefully I won't. So even if we say the name, you're going to be. Always. Right. Even without a court order. Okay. Was there a mix up that day? With yes. the schedule. What was the mix up? I thought that uh, I was going to exchange nine o'clock. Um, oh, can so, you? So just remember. You can say my daughter. daughter. You can say my daughter. That's okay. Okay. Um, it was a mix up uh, with exchanging our child. Um, I thought it was at nine o'clock. Um, I told Dad that I apologize and that I was on my way. Okay. So turn to the same page you were on. Ninety six. Yep. Is there a discrepancy between the time the stamp says on app post and the actual time that it is at that moment in time? Yes. Is there an example in the book that shows that discrepancy? Okay, well, on the 12-10-2021, um, it was a message from and it says it's 8-10, and on the um, time, it says 11-10 p.m., for example. Okay, so what's the difference between the stamp on the app post app and the real time? It's a three hour difference. Okay, so once you got the message, what did you do? Um, I told dad I was on my way. Okay, and what happened next? Once I got to the court order exchange, uh, dad was not there. All right, what was your um, concern with not being able to exchange the child with dad that day? Well, my concern was because he already told me that um, he did not give permission for to go on a cruise with me and that my flight was leaving out that night, that um, I was going to miss my flight or that dad, um, you know, I was going to get in trouble for mixing up the times. All right. And what did you do to try to get a hold of dad? Um, I tried to contact dad by his cell phone. I tried to contact dad via app close. Were you able to reach dad? Uh, at some point I was able to reach him, but not okay. right away. All right, how were you able to reach him? On the app. Okay, and what did you tell him on the app? Um, can I, can I reflect to my memory? You may. Um, so when I told dad that I was on my way, he said that uh, he thought I was going to keep her until 6 p.m. So he left a while ago. 6 p.m. when? I'm sorry? Keep her until 6 p.m. what day? Sunday. That's the time that I drop off. Sunday at 6. Was dad aware that you were going on a cruise? Yes, dad was aware that my flight left out that night. Okay, and so what did dad ultimately say after you got a hold of him on the app when you were at the drop off spot? Um, one second. Let me ask you this. Did dad ever return to get your, do your daughter that night? No. Were you able to contact dad and track him down to exchange the child? I'm no. Sure. I tried to. So, just a, I'm just sorry, Your Honor. Um, overrule. What other attempts did you make to try to effectuate an exchange of the child? So the other attempts that I tried to make, um, because again, I had to go on this cruise, I tried to contact law enforcement to see if they can contact him. Um, law enforcement called that cell phone and they did not get any answer. I tried to reach out to his mother and his sister because, um, you know, you know, there's the grandmother, mm -hmm. um, to see if I could leave with her and come pick him, pick 
pick her up. Um, the mom and sister denied to retrieve her when I was at their home with the police. Um, and you know, so I was there at a uh, house um, with the law enforcement Henderson Police Department. And once they realized that they could not contact them or the mom, um, they informed me, you know, that was nothing else that they can do to try and contact him. What did you end up doing? What What did you end up doing about this? So I ended up going going to the airport because my flight was set out to leave. I needed to be at the airport at eight o'clock, um, so I didn't make sure that I didn't miss my flight. Um, you were already late. To be fair. I was already late. Okay. To be fair. I'm just signposting because I know that I'm trying to follow the messages. Well, there was no objection. Oh, okay. And then um, I texted uh, that he could pick me up from the airport. Once I got to the airport, um, because again, I did not have a ticket for her. Um, so I, I texted dad that he could pick her up from the airport. Okay. Did dad ever respond to you and get her from the airport? No. What did you end up doing then? I ended up boarding the flight with my daughter. Okay, did you have to? I had to purchase a ticket for her. Okay, then what happened once you got to your destination? Uh, once I got to my destination, it was the time to uh, board the cruise. Um, and I was not able to board the cruise. Why were you unable to board the cruise? Um, because it was already a prepaid trip, and you just can't add, um, I guess, people on the day of the cruise. So when I showed up to board the, the ship, um, I was turned away um, because, you know, it was, it was never planned that I was going to come with me on the cruise because that was already denied. Okay. So before you had the cruise fiasco, did you also ask about having some time with before your second weekend ended? Yes. What did you ask him? I asked Dad, so it was still my timeshare. Um, I asked Dad, well, hey, I'm going to be back on a Sunday. Do you think it's, um, and again, I'm paraphrasing, it's not, you know, for verbiage, right? Mm -hmm. um, I asked him, can I still spend that time, that Sunday time with and would that have normally been your time or his time? It was normally my time. Okay. And what was Dad's response? He said no. Okay. Right. And I apologize if I keep saying your child's name. Just try to try to be conscious of it so yes. we don't have a record where the even the um, videographer has to do <clears throat> a lot of deleting. Okay. Okay, um, moving on to page 98, now we're into the Christmas season. Do you remember reaching out to Dad about presents for Yes, I do. Was that your year to have on Christmas? Um, I can't remember. Were you going to see her Christmas? Do you have a schedule where you do week on or first half, second half? Yes. Okay. So do you and remember I, what you asked Dad? I do remember what I asked Dad. I asked Dad if I could drop off some Christmas gifts for because I wasn't going to see her. All right. And what was Dad's response? I believe he said, no, thank you. All right. If you want to refer to refresh your recollection, it's on page 98 at the top yes, of the page. Yes, sorry. Dad said no thank you when I asked to uh, make the arrangements to drop off some gifts for our daughter for Christmas. Okay. Um, moving on to the next page, um, it looks like you, do you recall asking Dad to start getting some FaceTime visits? Yes, I do. And what was Dad's answer, if you remember, and if you don't, let me know. Can you tell me what page you're on? Oh, um, I actually misstated exactly what it says. So I'm on 99. Would you like to review the yes. message to refresh our question? I, I do remember. Okay, and what, what did you ask Dad? I asked him if he would mind starting up sending videos again of the child okay. on the app. 
And what was his response? His response was noted. Okay. Did you ask again yes. for a yes or a no or some kind of answer? Yeah, I asked again because uh, I didn't know what noted mean. I asked was the request possible. Okay. And what was dad's response? Noted. All right. And then what was your question again on January 20th? Um, I basically I told him that noted was not an answer. What about below that? And he told me noted again. And then what did you say? And I asked him, um, is this how we're going to co-parent? Because I didn't think that we were co-parenting correctly. And what did he say to that? And he told me noted again. Okay. <clears throat> All right, moving to Bates 101. Do you recall an issue with last minute appointments being made for your daughter? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What was the issue? Um, Dad will call the doctor's office um, and then get the next day appointment, uh, making it impossible for me to call off for work or request time off to attend the appointment. All right. So starting, for example, on Bates 101, um, do you recall a discussion with dad about a dentist appointment with Dr. Casey? Um, yes. Okay, and I'm sorry, doc, doctor's appointment. What? Tell me what happened during this, and approximately what date this happened. So this was on um, February 22nd, 2022. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I'm just reflecting on memory. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was about the, uh, I told him that I called the dentist's office um, regarding an appointment for August 2nd. Right. And that's not what I'm asking about. I'm asking about on, on Fe February 2nd, was there a notice from Dad that, that your daughter had, a, had an appointment that week? Yes. What did Dad say? He says that a, a lady... Olivia Hesians follow up with appointment with Dr. Casey on Thursday at 9 15. Okay, and what was the concern about dad's notice of the appointment? Um, that they were, sh they were short notice mm -hmm. um, and that he was not including me in the appointments or the process. Do you remember how many days notice you had on that instance? Um, if I can see a calendar from what the February 22nd was. Okay, well, why don't you switch to the next page, and you can see when you talk about the doctor's office, and you can tell me how many days in advance that was. Is this, is this a question, or is she telling her client what to do? Would it refresh your recollection to look at the it date? Would. Okay, go ahead. It looks like it was two days. Okay, so you got two days notice. What did you ask dad regarding your difficulty with the short notice? Um, do you want me, can I reflect off the messages or? You may review the message. And I'm still on page one, 101 when you're talking about the initial appointment setting. Um, I asked uh, Dad if he could reschedule the appointment Why? so I can meet Dr. Casey. All right, and what was Dad's response? He says, no, I'm not going to reschedule her appointment. Okay, so then what happened? Did, what happened on the day of the appointment on the 24th? Um, well, I got to the appointment on the 24th. Okay, slow down. You testified earlier that you weren't, you were having trouble making it. So yes. how did we get to this point where you made it? So I talked um, to my boss and told them, you know, I really wanted to meet this doctor. Um, I was notified, you know, short notice, and, you know, they accommodated me to leave work early. Okay, so then what happened on the day of the appointment? When I got to the appointment, the doctor's office told me that the appointment was canceled. Did I notify you that the appointment was canceled? No, Dad did not notify me that the appointment was canceled until I texted him that the appointment was canceled and that he didn't notify me of it. Okay, so you ended up missing work that day? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you ask Dad, and I'm sorry to skip around, but just right before that, before you took work off, did you ask him of the possibility of appearing a different way besides in person? Yes, I asked him if it was possible that he can call me so I can attend the appointment virtually, just so I can be aware of what was going on. And what was Dad's response? Um, he denied it. Okay, so would it refresh your recollection to see his response on the yes. page 102? Okay, um, Dad's response was noted when I asked him if um, I can attend the appointments uh, virtually or if he could call me. Okay, did you ever get a response from Dad agreeing to facilitate a call at the doctor? Never. Okay. All right, so turn to the next page. Do you recall reaching out to Dad about costs and child support? Yes. And what was that conversation about? Um, it was regarding, um, again, like you said, child support and if we could stipulate to an amount. Um, I talked to him about the raising costs of Nevada and how I did not want to fall behind in the child support order. Um, and we, you know, I talked to him about. Um, Were you having difficulty financially? Yes. Okay. What did what did uh, what was Dad's response to that e that email? Uh, Dad's response was again noted. Okay. Did he ever talk to you or engage in a conversation with you regarding this issue? No. All right. Um, turning to the next page. Was there another issue with scheduling doctor's appointments? Yes. And if so, what date? On 329 2020. 2022. What was the issue? Well, the issue was with um, so going to get a referral from Dr. Barlow. Oh, sorry. The child was going to get a referral from Dr. Barlow mm -hmm. to go see Dr. Lopez. Um, and it was taking a very long time. Um, mm -hmm for the appointment to get scheduled. Okay, so do you need to refresh your recollection of what was going on on March 29th? Council, what you really need to do is ask her a question, and then if she's having difficulty answering it, then you may use whatever document you okay. wanted to use to refresh your recollection. You're kind of doing it in the reverse order. Well, she, I asked her the question, but she didn't answer it the right way. She didn't what, answer the No, no, of what happened that day. I said, what happened that day so with your So you're trying to feed her the answers by pointing her no, to she, what's in the document? I don't know the answers. I only know what happened that But you just that. said she didn't answer it the right way. Well, I'm saying that that's not, the taking a long time to make an appointment was not what happened that day. That's what she answered. So I said, would you like to refresh your recollection of what happened? I can ask so you're it a different her, way. But you're asking to refresh the recollection, not because she didn't re not because she's saying I don't remember. You're asking her to refresh it because you want her to say what you want her to say. I don't I think that's different. I don't think she did remember, but I can ask her if she remembered. Well it's a little late now, right? Okay. But that's fine. I understand. May I ask it rephrase the question? Yes. Okay. How, did you have more issues with last minute scheduling? Yes. Okay. What happened on March twenty ninth? Um, I remember. Yes. On March 29th, um, I got a text message from that he has set an appointment up uh, for our daughter's lazy eye, and the appointment was made today and set for tomorrow at 8.30. Okay, so what date was were you informed of the appointment? So I was informed March uh, 29th, 2022. And when was the appointment set for? And the appointment was set the next day. For the uh, 30th. What time? 8.30. A.M. or P.M.? A.M. Okay. What was your response to Dad's notification of the appointment? My response was, um, can I read it for a Do you need to look at the response to refresh your recollection of what you said? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and then tell me what you said. I said, our daughter's mom and then I said my name, was notified by dad that he scheduled the child appointment without any consideration or input 
from me without a without a 24-hour notice. And what was Dad's response to your message? His response was noted again. Okay. All right. So after you went to the appointment, what was the doctor's recommendation? Did you end up going to the appointment the next day at 8:30 a.m.? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you recall if you had to take work off for that appointment? I did. Okay. What happened at the appointment for a future recommendation for your daughter? Um, I do remember Dr. Barlow. I'm going to object to the hearsay, if any hearsay. Yeah, she can't tell us what someone said, other than obviously another party. You just can't tell us like what the physician or anyone else said. Okay. Um, I remember it being an issue at the doctor's office. Is what that issue happened at the doctor's office? Um, regarding like a dad saying that I wasn't allowed to be at the appointment. Just, okay, so what? Tell me, tell everyone what you remember about showing up that day. And go from there. I remember showing up to the doctor's office. Um, d Dad was there with our child. Um, I remember Dad telling me that I could not hug our child. Um, I remember uh, Dad kind of shielding the child so I really couldn't look at her. Um, I remember Dr. Barlow, or I remember um, being told uh, that. You know, parents had to agree regarding the vaccination issue. Okay, well, that time that you went in for that specific appointment, do you remember what the issue was, if any, when you were in the doctor's office? Um, the appointment being, being uh, I guess, excluded by uh, dad, you know, not talking to the child, mm -hmm. um, him not agreeing about uh, the doctor's recommendations. Okay, so did you go back into the office room with dad? And counsel, uh, Ms. Moore, it's 128-ish. So do oh. you need to take a break to do your hearing? Probably, probably. And then we're just resuming his testimony. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm continuing on with the appointment that occurred on the 30th of March, and I'm on page 104 of the Atlas records. Do you independently, without looking at these records, remember what happened after as a recommendation from the doctor's appointment that day? Yes. What happened? Um, she was referred to a specialist. Okay. Um, and did you reach out to to request protocol for the next appointment? Yes. What did you say? Or, or paraphrase if you remember. Um, I asked or paraphrase anyone, can we get this scheduled for our kids? Okay. And did you ask to be involved? Yes. What did, what did, what was your response? Um, can I look at the you may. messages? His response was noted again. All right. After the 30th of, oh, was there another um, comment after that point from about when he was going to set the appointment? Yes. When did he say he would do it? Uh, Dad told me on the app that he was going to set the appointment sometime uh, next week. Do you want to refer to the? Or is, I will set the appointment for sometime next week. Okay. So did Dad ever respond to your request to be involved in setting the appointment? to actually participate in setting the appointment? I uh, don't know. All right. To your knowledge, did Dad set an appointment the next week? No, he did not. Did you reach out to Dad to ask for a status? I did. Okay, so continuing, I'm on page 106 now. Um, what did you ultimately end up doing, and when did you do it? Okay, so on uh, 4-28-2022, um, I went ahead and scheduled her eye appointment for June 1st, 2022 at 10.20 a.m. And it was five weeks, so it gave, um, you know, plenty of time.
to clear his schedule because he did not schedule the appointment within the week that he said. All right. And you advise when you're um, scheduling the appointment? Yes. All right. What was your response? Uh, his response was that that wasn't going to work and he said some other things after that. All right. And what did you, how, how did you respond to that? Um, I had asked him, because he told me that he had uh, other plans, I asked him, well, um, is it okay if I can reflect yes. my memory? Yes, you may. Okay, I'm ready. Go ahead. Um, I told him if we can discuss some times and dates to better accommodate his travel plans around around our daughter's like um, medical attention that she needed from the referral because it was over a month ago and it was not scheduled within the week. Mm -hmm. And what so was his response? It was noted. All right. And was there also, why was um, he wasn't available when you scheduled the appointment? To my knowledge, that said that he had already scheduled um, a vacation that week. And did you ask the week before and yeah. after Memorial Day holiday? All right. And did you remind that of the requirements when you do a um, vacation? I did. I asked that if he could send me his travel itinerary. Okay. Um, all right. And what was Dad's response to that? That was noted. All right. What ended up happening for the referral appointment? Can I reflect my memory? Sure. Well, what you really need to do is you either remember or you don't, right? So when she says, when she asks you a question, if you don't remember, you say, I don't remember. And then she can say, oh, you can refresh your recollection. Because it's really not beneficial for the court if you're just reading the document. I can read it myself. Okay. So it's kind of more helpful to just tell me what you remember. So you're telling me, telling us you don't remember? Can you rephrase the question for me? I can't rephrase it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I can. It, may I, Your Honor? Sure. Okay. Um, do you remember rescheduling the appointment that you scheduled? I do remember him uh, rescheduling the appointment that I had made and him basically telling me that I can't schedule um, during his during his timeshare. So okay. I, I took it upon myself to schedule because that was the only day available that they gave me and it was five weeks out and that she really needed to get in to see the doctor. So mm -hmm. I thought it was important and maybe dad was gonna think it was important too that I went ahead and tried to you know be a co-parent and get it scheduled for him. Mm -hmm. um, but he did not like that and he said that I was not allowed to schedule appointments during his timeshare Monday through Friday. Okay. What's the problem with you not being able to participate in scheduling appointments Monday through Friday? Um, according to Dad, he says I'm not allowed to schedule appointments during his timeshare. And what is problem does that pose to you? Um, well, the problem poses to me that I cannot attend the appointments or I can't make the appointments uh, because he says I can't make them because it's his time. Okay. But does Dad um, include you with the setting the appointments? No. Tell me about what happens when you're at the doctor's appointments together. Do you schedule them together when you're there? When we're at doctor's appointments and they need to be scheduled, um, dad usually just does all the scheduling. He doesn't, uh, when I'm at the appointment, he doesn't, you know, turn around and ask me, um, you know, does this day work for you? Uh, he just, you know, schedules the appointment without any input or any consideration for my time or, or anything of that sort. How does he notify you of the appointments when you're in the office? Um, he does not. In, so inside the office, Dad does not notify me of the appointments. So when Dad goes up to the counter to make the appointment, um, they give him a little card that has the appointment date on it. Um, so he, he doesn't turn around and speak to me after. He goes to his vehicle and then he sends a picture. He takes a picture and sends a picture of the appointment card and sends it on the app and says, hey, this is the appointment day. Okay. So have, have you been in, permitted to be involved in the appointment setting within the last two years? No. Um, 
Are you familiar with Dad having other custody cases? I am familiar with Dad. Jack drowning in elements. That's the statement. Okay, may I uh, you can say my offer of proof for relevant? You may do so. Yeah. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Um, had a very long history of high conflict litigation, including a lot of protective orders. They're all um, public record as far as the court can take judicial notice of them, and they are relevant because it's an ongoing pattern of his behavior to have high conflict parenting. Um, he has had an extremely high, high conflict parenting with the mother of his other children. I think a lot of what has been, and the reason why it's relevant is my client has been accused of being the problem when it comes to the parenting. And the records will show she's the one who's trying to accommodate, and it's not, and that's also a pattern of what Ms. Go ahead, Ms. Mark. And Your Honor, it's highly prejudicial to bring this before the court and ask the court uh, to take judicial notice of uh, litigation in another case, uh, particularly um, when it, this is the first I've ever heard of this during the litigation. And I would make an offer of proof that he and his wife, or former wife, and I could bring her in to rebut that, mm -hmm. that they're best of friends. So with that being said, it's highly prejudicial. Well, my concern really, it's not mom's first-hand knowledge, right? It would be dad's first-hand knowledge. And isn't your client testifying? Yes. Yeah, so ask dad the questions. It's, okay. it's his knowledge that I care about, really not your client so much. Right, and I think what my client does know is what she she was with well, Mr. I mean, I could probably I could ask her what she knows. Now that they've oh. taken the So why don't you question dad about it? Okay. That's fair. Um... All right. At some point, did you, okay, so do you recall dad telling you about his new wife? Um, yes. What did he, dad say and when, if you remember? He, I, it's not verbatim, right? Um, but I do remember uh, dad sending me a message on the app close and basically put, we'll be residing at this address. Did you know that dad was married? No. And did you ever hear of someone named Never. Okay. Um, do you recall in Mother's Day of 22, that you asking dad for accommodations? I did. All right, what do you remember about that? I remember um, sending dad a message on the app close uh, message and I asked him um, that, you know, my other friends and coworkers, they were doing like a Mother's Day event and I asked if I could, uh, just, I think I, I asked him if I could just keep drop the child off an hour later because it was Mother's Day and he told me no. What was the special event on Mother's Day? Um, my coworkers and my friends, they were just throwing like a like a dinner a celebration for all you know, all the kids around. Um, like a get together event. Okay. And what was dad's response? Um, it was simply no. Okay. Um And do you recall what you said to dad after he responded? Can you tell, um, if I remember what dad said? Do you remember? Your Honor, I would object to the witness asking counsel questions. Well, I think she's just trying to clarify the question, but you can ask it again. Do you remember what dad said when you asked him to clarify? Um, can I reflect my memory? What page are well, we so on? So you don't remember? I don't remember. If you don't remember, okay. And then okay. she needs to say to you, do you need to refresh your recollection mm -hmm. rather than you saying it to her? Because she's the attorney. Yes, you're So right. she's asking you, do you need to refresh your recollection? Yes. yes. Okay, then you may do so. And on page 108. Okay. What was the response? Is it okay if I can read it? Yes. Um, he says, pursuant to the most recent court order, we are directed by the court to follow the court order in place. I will not be able to accommodate your request at this time. Be, be advised, all future requests will receive the exact same response. Okay. Uh, do you recall reaching out to you about some uh, transitional stress the child was experiencing during exchanges? Yes. And did you have a, con and what was dad's rec uh, suggestion at that time? 
Um, I believe his, his, his suggestion was that uh, he wanted her to be observed by um, a specialist. What was your concern about her being observed by a specialist at that time? Um, that she was extremely young. How old was she? Uh, she was two at that time. Okay. Did you feel she was old enough to do see a specialist or, or a specialist with therapist? No. And I also, because of what... So you have to wait till there's a question. Mm -hmm. oh. okay. Was there other issues with the request that you would like to share? Yes. Go ahead. Um, so when dad was uh, talking about the request of, you know, um, having be observed by you mean, you mean your child. Oh, our child to be observed by the specialist. Um, he was, it seemed to me that in the messages that he was trying to insinuate that um, had like some type of conflict on our daughter had some conflict on loyalty issues and that she was being disloyal to him um, or something of that sort. You know, it's probably not verbatim, but. Okay. And why did that concern you? Because she was only two years old and uh, I just think she was just going through a transition from car to car and that she doesn't even know, you know, about being disloyal or anything of that sort. So. I just thought that was a little, you know, not accurate for dad to say. Okay. Um, do you remember asking for more time in uh, summertime 22 with your, with your daughter? Yes. I do remember, I remember asking for time from dad. What's your work schedule in the summer? Um, I'm off during the summer because I work for school. And what was... Dad's response, if you remember, when you asked for more time when you're off work. Um, I don't want to guess, so I don't remember what his exact response was. Would it assist you to look at the book? Yes. And messages to refresh your recollection? Yes. Okay. Also, if you guys are hot, you can take your jackets off, because I think it's strangely hot in here. <laughs> so if you need to take them off. Oh, it's all that you judge, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Here, but I feel a little jealous right this second. <laughs> but I don't care if you want to take your jackets off, you can. No, so I would not do that. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, I'm on page, I'm on uh, May 19th. You want to refresh your recollection? Okay. What was uh, Ms. Uh, response to your request some more time on your time off in the summer? Um, he just basically said the same thing about, you know, due to their court order, he can't make any accommodations, and um, basically uh, all future requests is going to get the same response, that he has to follow the order and he cannot make any accommodations. All right, um, going to, um, do you recall asking dad who was watching the child? I do. Do you recall Dad's response? I believe it was no response because I didn't get the person who was watching her. Okay, so asked a different way. Do you remember if Dad responded with the name or information of the babysitter? I do remember Dad not responding with the name or the babysitter. Okay. Do you recall being concerned that your daughter was not allowed to call you mom? Yes. What do you remember about that? I was. I remember um, my daughter uh, calling me by my first name, and then I remember her calling me mommy. Did you raise that concern with dad? I did, and yeah. And what was dad's response? Um, I can't recall, I don't remember. Okay. Would it refresh your recollection to look at the the response? Yes. Okay, so turn your attention to page 112 on June 5th for the conversation. And let me know when you are ready. Okay, I'm ready. What was the response? I told Dad if he could please uh, not encourage our daughter to call me or mommy as I am.
became strictly mom to our child. And his response? Uh, Dad's response after I had uh, sent that message uh, was noted. Were, did you express another concern that day as well? Yes, I expressed uh, another concern that day. What was the concern? Um, that dad was, it was medical appointments that he uh, canceled. Okay, so previously when we talked about dad being unavailable for the medical appointment, what was the reason he was unavailable? Because of his travel. Right, and what did you ask from him at that time? I asked him to send his uh, travel itinerary. Okay, and what did you ask him for again on June 5th? His travel itinerary. Did you ever receive his travel itinerary? No. What was Dad's response? Um, Dad's response after that, when I followed up with him, was noted yet again. Okay. Was there another appointment right after that that Dad scheduled with no notice to you? If you remember. I'm sorry, um, what was the question? Scheduling appointments with little or no notice. I, I can't remember. Okay. Would it refresh your recollection to look at the message? Yes. Look at June 14th. Same page. Tell me what happened that concerned you. Um, it was a pattern of dad um, calling doctor's offices and making appointments the same day or the next day not giving me enough time. So this is just another example of dad telling me how he scheduled um, an appointment for skin to be looked at and that uh, it was an appointment only available for today at 3.30. Um, and that was the appointment that he set. Were you able to make that appointment? No, I was not uh, able to make that appointment, but I did ask that um, to follow up with me regarding the doctor's appointment. Okay. Okay, so turn to, well, do you remember asking dad to accommodate a family emergency you had? I do. All right. What what date do you recall that happening, if you remember? I want to say it was sometime in June or July. Okay. Would it refresh your recollection to review the message? Yes. Turn to page 114 on July 2nd. Tell me what you were asking Dad about. Well, do um, you remember what it was about, though? Yes. I remember okay. now. So now that you've looked at the page, you remember what date it was? Yes, on the 2nd of July. Okay. What were you asking for accommodation from Dad? Um, my family, our family, we had a, a bereavement situation with the passing of um, one of my family members. So I was asking Dad if he could make accommodations due to the bereavement or the funeral of uh, What accommodations were you trying to make or ask for? I was asking for accommodations to travel uh, with my daughter to Michigan to attend the funeral. What was Dad's response? Well, what, what else was happening during that same? Was that, what whose time was it that you were asking for okay. permission? And it was it was my time. Okay, so what was going on during that time frame to make it your time? I don't. Understand was it a regular custodial? Time? Was it a special holiday time? I would object to leading. The yeah, Council, you're really veering off into leading questions okay. almost continuously mm -hmm. through this line of questioning. Okay. So you cannot do that obviously on direct. Sure. I can rephrase. Do you recall what the characterization of your time was? Um, so I was supposed to have my daughter that weekend, and then on my birthday, I believe, which was a Monday, I was going to have her again. So it was a uh, holiday time plus the regular vi visitation time. What did you ask Dad? What accommodations did you ask of him? Um, I asked him if he would accommodate uh, me to take my our daughter with us to uh, Michigan for the funeral. What was Dad's response? Um, he basically told me that it was no extended weekend um, and that we had to follow the court's order. Okay. Were you able to take your daughter to the funeral? No. Was it accurate, your belief accurate regarding you having that Monday? Yes. 
It was my custody time for Monday. Did you explain that to dad? Yes. Did dad ultimately end up agreeing and letting you go? No. Were you later asked for the same accommodation for dad? Yes. Did you allow dad to go to his funeral? I did. Okay, um, turned, uh, do you recall you at, um, asking for accommodation for custodial time in August of 2022? From Dad? Um, I do, yes. What happened? Objection calls from Meredith. Can we can ask her to remember first and then. Do you remember asking for accommodation from dad during August of 2022? Can I read? I don't remember. Would you like to look at pages to refresh your recollection? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Can I add to what date am I looking at? August <coughs> 17th. I would object to leaving it even to. Well, the records are already in this in Okay, I was She's just telling me what date to look at. Can I answer? Yes. After uh, refreshing my memory, I was telling Dad how my mom was in town because she lives in Michigan and that she was here um, and she, because she doesn't get to spend a lot of time. If he will accommodate uh, her to spend some time. In what was? Dad's response. Um, his exact response was, I can't accommodate this request at this time. Do you recall asking to be, Dad to be flexible with time during 2022 and him granting the request of any kind of flexibility? I can't remember Dad uh, granting during that time any like uh, accommodations. Okay, so you can't specifically remember either way. Either way, yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do you recall dad continuing to not co-parent as it related to scheduling appointments? Do you recall other instances? Yes. Okay. What was the next instance that you recall? There was so many incidents. Um, Another incident uh, could be, you know, me going to the dentist's office and um, dad trying to tell the dentist that um, I'm not allowed to be at the appointment. Um, when do, we, do you recall this happening, if you remember? I want to say sometime last year. Do you remember dad t scheduling appointments and saying it was the only time that he could accommodate that date? Yes. Do you remember when, when that happened, specifically? If you guys can reflect my memory, I probably can remember. So yes or no, do you remember specifically what date that occurred? No. Okay. Would it help to review your message? Yes. All right, turn to page 117 on September 1st. Tell me the concern. Well, the concern was uh, oh, that he did not include me in the uh, scheduling of the appointment. Was there a problem with the appointment date? Yes, that I, it was my work schedule day. And how did you respond to that regarding that issue? I asked him if we could work together um, and set up a time that works for both of us to attend doctor's appointments for that day. 
Um, and I asked him if he can include me in the scheduling and appointments um, so I can be informed and involved and, um, you know, kind of just asking him, you know, to tell, let me be included before he sets these appointments so I can try to accommodate my work schedule, you know, and I have to constantly keep going to my boss last minute, you know, trying to plead to go to the appointment. And what was Dad's response? Um, his response, he, he never changed the appointment. And he, Dad's response was that, you know, it was based on the team, um, and that was the only doctor's, that was the doctor's availability, and that was his only availability, and it was because, you know, routine. So it was the routine, uh, the you know, the doctor only having the schedule available, um, so therefore he cannot uh, accommodate and change the appointment. Okay. Did you misrepresent the rules at the doctor's office? Many times. What do you remember about rules he said were in place with Dr. Lopez's office? Dr. Lopez's office, he told me that it was a one parent rule and only one parent was allowed at the doctor's office. Did you follow up and find out whether that was true? I called the doctor's office, and the doctor's office said that I was allowed. So objection, you're saying. saying. Okay. So you can't say what someone else said. Okay, so you can't do that? Yeah. Did you become aware that that was not true? I became aware that that was not true. Well, I don't know if it calls for a hearsay response. You haven't responded yet, but. Okay, so there's no hearsay response. I did show up to the appointment. And were you permitted to be I there? I was permitted to be there. With, with the appointment. Did you learn that that was an incorrect statement that only one parent could go? Yes, because we were both there. Okay. Um, on the last appointment that you we talked about that was set on the 14th, did you end up ha having to miss that appointment? Yes. On around that time frame, do you remember getting emergency medical care for your daughter? <coughs> yes. What do you recall? Um, I want to say I recall uh, she was really sick. She was throwing up. Um, <coughs> you know, she had a fever. Um, I notified Dad on the app, and I took her to the emergency room. Did you end up getting a bill for that visit? I did. Okay, let's talk about the insurance situation. Um, okay. How many insurances is, is your daughter covered by at that time? At that time, I want to say two. And what two were those? Um, one was uh, Medicaid, and um, I want to say the other one was an insurance, uh, United Healthcare. I want to say that's what that was. Were you able to use your daughter's insurances when you took her to get medical care, emergency medical treatment, for example? Yes. Okay. What did dad ever object to you using any insurance? Not that I can remember. Okay. Did dad ever object to you using Medicaid? Yes. What do you remember about that? Um, I remember uh, dad tell. I don't know if I can testify. You can so. say what dad said. Um, us being at the doctor's office and uh, dad saying that we could not use uh, the Medicaid that was on file with the doctor's office. Do you know why you were not allowed to use just, uh, your daughter's Medicaid? Because he wanted a copay to be paid. Dad wanted a copay to be paid. Did dad ever threaten you when you tried to use her, uh, your daughter's Medicaid? Um, I don't recall. Okay, would it refresh your recollection if I did show you? Yes. Turn to page uh, 136. Wait, this is the wrong page. Um, I'm going to have to come back to that because it was my other... 
my other page numbers that I have that written down on. So just give me a moment on that one, and I'll come back to that. Okay. Have you ever been able to run Medicaid for your daughter at a doctor? Yes. When did that start? I want to say back in 2020. Okay, so when did it, that stop then? I want to say it stopped uh, maybe a year ago. It was, it has, it's been recent, so not that long ago it stopped. Were you, did you become aware that your daughter was covered under Medicaid and you, when you were not permitted to use it though? Objection. Do you know if your daughter was covered in Medicaid? She was, yes. Was it during a time when you were denied using it? Yes. When was that? Um, I want to say, I can remember back in 2021, we were at uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Barlow's uh, appointments when he would tell the office staff not to use the Medicaid and that other insurance on file. I'm going to protect you. You're objecting to what? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, if, if we're going prior to the last custodial order, I would object to any inquiries prior to that, which was, I want to say, September the 11th, 2021, and it appears that we're going back past that time. I was, here, I was in 19. I'm asking, can I rephrase to make sure I ask sure. her? 